So, uh, greetings uh, on our sixth day uh, of this course together. And our theme for today is divine intelligence and creativity. And the spiritual law, direct quote from Sir John Templeton, is this, a universal divine intelligence flows through all of us. Now, this is an extraordinary claim, and I don't expect everyone to uh, either immediately or ever agree with it. Uh, when we look around at the difficulties in which uh, uh, our world is, is constantly embroiled, and it can be hard sometimes to see that there could be any sort of divine intelligence at work in all of that. And so this might seem to be a, a somewhat optimistic view of things. Um, so perhaps, but, but this is not a new theme with, uh, with Sir John. Uh, I can actually quote from numerous religious traditions uh, similar ideas. One in particular that I, I, tr I do like is uh, from a, an interpreter of the Sufi uh, tradition, which is the mystical dimension of Islam. Uh, who writes that in the mystical uh, traditions of Islam, knowledge from God's presence is that which is revealed in the depths of the heart without an identifiable second cause. To put that a little bit more simply, um, knowledge from God arises within us intuitively. This is the kind of divine intelligence, at least one aspect, one aspect of it that uh, Sir John is referring to. And this theme of divine intelligence can be found in, uh, in many religious traditions. It can be found certainly in Islam, both in the Quran and in the mystical traditions, the notion of this irradiating principle of, 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 um, of wisdom, of divine wisdom. Chokmah, uh, ilm, uh, marifat, various terms that are used. Um, uh, in, in Judaism, divine wisdom is hikmah. In the ancient Greek traditions, it's gnosis and sophia. And in the Hindu tradition, uh, the word is jnana, and there are other terms as well. So this is not a, a new idea. But what could, this, uh, what could this actually be, practically be, other than just perhaps a poetic expression? Um, and uh, I suppose one way of trying to understand divine intelligence is, as the, is through the notion of creativity. And at first, you may think of creativity as just something that perhaps a writer has or an inventor has. But for, for Sir John and for these traditions, creativity is actually a cardinal attribute of the divine. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's the way in which um, new adaptations arise in, in completely contingent circumstances. It, it's as if when I'm, I'm, in, in heavy, I'm engaged in some activity that I've been doing for, for a while and I suddenly realize, oh, here's a simpler way of doing it, and I then do that. That's creativity. Or I'm, I'm struck with an inspiration that allows me to bring a new value or a new idea or a, 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 a new art form I, into expression. That's creativity. It's a cardinal attribute of the divine. Um, my, one of my, uh, doc, my doctoral advisor uh, when I was uh, working on my PhD was uh, a well-known theologian by the name of Gordon Kaufman at Harvard. And uh, for him, uh, God was essentially, especially in his later writings, he identified God with creativity. And uh, he attempted to relate this notion of creativity to, uh, to evolutionary theory, to the sciences in general, as well as to the more usual uh, sorts of creativity we associate with artists and with inventors. So what could this notion of creativity be? Let me just uh, suggest to you a few of the sources uh, that uh, animated early on uh, Sir John. And m above all, this notion of divine creativity um, is expressed in the Unity School, uh, the New Thought religious movement that began in the 1890s, and that is expressive of the optimistic cosmic vision uh, that, ar that arose in, when Protestant Christianity in the U.S. began to interact with uh, Hindu uh, ways of thinking. 
because of the translation of the Upanishads and the Bhagavad Gita. And one of the founders of Unity, a Myrtle Fillmore, expressed it uh, this way. Actually, this would be her husband, Charles and Myrtle. They were the founders of the Unity movement. He writes, We believe that divine intelligence is present in every atom of human beings and matter, and that the more abundant life, which Jesus promised, is flooding the world and quickening the minds and bodies of people everywhere. The, the, the Fillmores were themselves influenced by another significant figure in 19th century America, uh, one of the most in, uh, influential women of her day, Mary Baker Eddy, the founder of what's known as Christian Science, and she wrote quite influentially in her book Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, all substance, intelligence, wisdom, being, immortality, cause and effect belong to God. These are his attributes, the eternal manifestations of the in infinite divine principle, love. And a later Christian science writer um, wrote in mid-last mid century, Robert Ellis, Christian science teaches that God is intelligence. Therefore, we live perpetually in the presence of intelligence. So what kind of intelligence can this be? Well, perhaps an example will help. Now, I, I don't mean to call to mind immediately the idea of creationism or intelligent design when I suggest that, in fact, there is a creative intelligence uh, that uh, is the source, the fountainhead of the uh, creative processes that have given rise to our universe and to biological life on our planet. Um, I am in no way discounting uh, evolution or the study of evolution or Darwinism when I suggest that it's possible, at least philosophically, to consider that there may be uh, other factors as well as random selection at work in the uh, formation, the evolutionary uh, emergence of, of, of life on, on this evolved planet. And it's perhaps time when we can actually begin to raise such questions, because there are uh, many uh, people today, uh, you can encounter many of these bold thinkers. They were uh, people who've won uh, Templeton Prizes and have been awarded Templeton Grants, people, uh, eminent physicists and uh, people working in the different sciences, as well as theologians, who have kind of dared to broach this idea that there might be a creative intelligence also at work in the formation of life on our planet. How would that work? So I suggest that to make sense of this, we have to put to the side any traditional ideas of, evol of evolution as being guided by a kind of cosmic tinkerer, someone who's selecting um, uh, at different outcomes. And instead, think of cosmic intelligence or this, this, this creative intelligence as an emergent knowledge a kind of uh, capacity that occurs in context of adapting means to ends, a way of bringing together in a completely imminent process that arises very naturally, a way of linking causes and effects. It's this kind of non-coercive, non-superintending wisdom that we experience every day when we get a new electronic gadget, when we have a new device that needs to be integrated into the ecosystem of electronic devices at home, and we don't know quite how it works, but, but we, we, we play with it a little bit, and we suddenly realize, oh, this is what that does, and then suddenly we have this whole sense of how to operate this new element in our digital ecosystem. So an example I like to give sometimes is I taught for many years in a, in, in a, in a small city, that uh, developed because someone had brought a, a railway uh, line down this long peninsula, this place called Newport News, Virginia, down this long peninsula, they created a, a railhead that then, of course, allowed coal and other materials to be shipped and then shipped overseas. And before that railhead was there, there was virtually nothing there. It's only a little over 100 years ago that that occurred, maybe 120, 130 years ago, that that rail, railhead was built. There was really only kind of, you know, kind of uh, the kind of countryside that one expects in Tidewater, Virginia, there in a small town, perhaps. But as a result of that decision, that one decision, the whole city, uh, that whole city began to emerge over the next century. 
with everything, with all the people that it attracted, the industries that it attracted, with the result that in a very natural, not externally directed process, there was a creative adaptation of means to ends, of causes to effects, with the result that a, 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 a city arose in what had previously been just a, a, you know, an isolated area. That's, that's the kind of notion of creativity I think that Sir John is suggesting, and that is suggested by these classical traditions that speak about divine creativity and intelligence. And I, I want to suggest that I'm not a scientist. I'm, I guess I'm a pluralist theologian in a non-coercive way as a way to go forward in the future for bringing together our different disciplines of religious, the religious sciences and the and the, the, the sciences uh, and, and the, 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 the empirical sciences as well, to bring the two of them together under the heading of creativity or divine intelligence.